Great. Well, welcome everyone to uh, the first day of this two-day online conference on comparative histories of the development of social work across the Commonwealth. My name is Philip Murphy. Uh, until recently, I was director of the Institute of Commonwealth Studies. Uh, I'm now director of history and policy at the Institute of Historical Research. It's almost exactly a year since we uh, staged a workshop on this topic. Um, COVID has been a dreadful time for all of us, but as academics, we've um, uh, become a keenly aware of the resources that the internet provides and the opportunities it provides for linking scholars and experts and practitioners around the world. Our workshop last year gave a sense of that and, and the richness of experience and expertise that is, is out there across the Commonwealth. And so we decided to uh, have a more detailed exploration of that uh, in a, a major conference, which we're going to run over two days. Uh, it's now quite early in the morning uh, in, in the UK. And uh, we timed this so that uh, people, particularly in uh, uh, East Asia, um, Africa, could join us. Um, uh, tomorrow, we're starting later in the day, UK time, uh, so that people to the, the west of us can play a full role. Um, but we're recording both sessions so that everyone will be able to see the full conference. Uh, and we aim to use this as the starting point of putting together uh, a major funding bid, uh, looking at uh, social work across the town. Um, I'm going to say a few words uh, in, in a little while, setting out a kind of conceptual. But before I pass over to David Jones uh, of the Commonwealth Organization for Social Work, I'd just like to pay my own tribute to, to David in particular uh, for putting this program together. It's been a huge amount of work uh, and I'm extremely grateful to him for, for everything he's done. Um, and, and thank you all for, for joining us. It's, it's wonderful to see so many people registering from, from across the world for, the, for this conference. I hope you'll find it interesting. And without further ado, I'll just pass over to, to David now. Uh, David, you're muted. That's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> we started as we've been to go on. Um, welcome to everybody. I'm David Jones from the Commonwealth Organization for Social Work. Uh, social worker qualified over 40 years now. Um, but thanks to Philip for um, his uh, um, drive and, and helping us focus and to the Institute and to Gemma, who's got up really early in the morning in the UK to um, support us with this uh, really quite complex event. I, it, it's astonishing to me when I first mm. went to Africa in the 1960s, um, if I wanted to phone from where I was living into Nairobi, I had to book it in advance. And now we can just connect across the whole Commonwealth and we've got over 60 people already watching from many, many countries. So welcome to all of you. Um, I need to thank in the beginning some of the organisations that have helped us um, to put this on. Um, obviously, the Commonwealth Organisation for Social Work, our chair, will speak soon. The Institute of Commonwealth Studies in um, the University of London. Um, and uh, we've got uh, King's College London, Jill Manthorpe is, is here. Um, and uh, the University of Edinburgh, George Palatil will be talking to us uh, tomorrow. Um, the Social Work History Network, which I chair. Um, has supported this, this project from the beginning and uh, is uh, a, a supporter, um, the British Association of Social Workers and the Barbados Association and the Kenyan so Association is also connected. And of course, we thank the Commonwealth Foundation and the Commonwealth Secretariat. And it's a huge honour that we have the Director General um, of the Foundation and the Secretary General of the Commonwealth speaking later. So thanks um, everybody for, um, for, for this. And 
Why are we doing it? Um, well, social work is often hidden, but is so important, as Patricia Scotland will say in a few moments. It's part of our societies. We play a key role, but we know that we are at our most effective when we are facilitating other people to make changes. And we do not put the spotlight on ourselves, but sometimes it's right to do that and to reflect on the good things and the problematic things that are in our history. So with all of that, um, we've got a, a big agenda, lots of interesting things to see and listen later. But I want to introduce our first speaker, who is um, Sylvia Daisy, and she is live from Chennai, which is very exciting. We're coming people all around the world to this event. But Sylvia started her career as a teacher and she then went on to teach social work and she's now associate professor at the Department of Social Work in Madras Christian College. And MCC in Chennai has been a huge supporter of the uh, Commonwealth Organization for Social Work. And Sylvia in particular has put a lot of time um, and her professional commitments to chairing the uh, organization. So Sylvia, it's great to welcome you. I can see you're online and I invite you to give your welcome address. Thank you, David. Good day to everyone. Happy to meet you all on this online platform. Hope each one of you is happy, healthy, and blessing to many. A warm welcome on behalf of COSWA and the organizers for this webinar on comparative histories of the development of social work across the Commonwealth countries. Whoever is a victor, there should be, after the war, a commonwealth of nations, said the great political leader Gandhiji. His quote helps us to realize the significance of the commonwealth in the past and contemporary society. Commonwealth has transferred societies in line with the values of the commonwealth charter, democracy, multilateralism, sustainable development, and human rights. We find in history that in order to promote and protect the rights of the vulnerable, the Commonwealth continues to encourage and assist member countries, particularly the small states, with the process of ratifying the major human rights conventions, drafting and implementing legislations to give them effect in national laws and with reporting obligations arising from them. By learning the history of social work, we understand that the social work profession has its roots in the history of the Commonwealth. And among the human service professions, social workers are the ones that are better placed to organize and provide social services to the people. They are the key components of national and social development. We also understand from history that the social work profession grew out of humanitarian and democratic ideals and its values are based on respect for the equality, worth and dignity of all people, which aligns with the values of Commonwealth. Social work as a global profession promotes social change, problem solving in human relationships and liberation of people and engages in actions designed to influence social policies. Theories of human behavior and social systems are applied in social work profession to intervene at the points where people interact with the environment. Because in history, we find that whenever humans interact with the environment, there may be conflicts or development. Social work as a profession helps society work better for people and helps people function better within society. The Commonwealth with its wide reaching networks of governmental, non-governmental and civil society organizations across all continents is an ideally placed network to tackle the global challenges. Financial crisis to income inequality, changing technologies, war and armed conflicts, poverty and the pressures of immigration are the present global challenges. To tackle these global challenges, 
The support of the Commonwealth is required in almost all spheres and sectors in terms of new policies, intervention models, strategies, with due consideration of the lower and middle income group countries. In a gentle way, you can shake the world, said the great leader Gandhi. The time is now for the Commonwealth to capitalize on the diversity within its network, to work together to respond to these challenges and consider how the social work workforce can be positioned to deal with the contemporary global challenges. People without knowledge of the past history, origin and culture are like trees without roots. I trust this webinar will help us to get the right perspective about history of social work in Commonwealth countries and align all our actions to create a better world for everyone. Keeping in mind the vulnerable communities, lower income group countries, sustainable goals, environment, democracy, good governance, and human rights for all. A small group of determined and like-minded people can change the course of history. History can never give us a program for the future, but can give us a fuller understanding of ourselves and our common humanity so that we can better face the future. May this webinar help each one of us to make a greater impact globally and locally. I once again welcome the speakers of the webinar representing the different Commonwealth countries, the participants from all over the world and all like-minded people who want to be history makers. Let us stay united to make this world a better place for all. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much Sura, for, for joining us and for, for that wonderful introduction to our day. Um, it, it now gives me great pleasure um, to introduce uh, Professor Wendy Thompson. Great pleasure, not just because uh, since 2019, Wendy has been Vice Chancellor of the University of London, but because she's also a distinguished expert in social policy in her own right. Um, the career uh, in both Canada and the UK. <clears throat> she worked in a number of uh, local authorities in the UK before becoming director of the Audit Commission. In Tony Blow's second government, um, she uh, led the Office of Public Service Reform in the Cabinet Office before moving back to uh, Canada, where she was Professor of Social Policy at McGill University. Wendy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Philip. I'm uh, delighted to be joining you here this morning. Uh, bright and early, as we say this morning uh, in, in this country. Uh, this is a, well, a very welcome event, and I was very pleased to uh, say be invited to, to join you in uh, introducing it this morning, but also very pleased to see its endeavor. Uh, it, you know, it's, a, I, it, it, it's obviously a topic very close to my heart, so very, very pleased to see it being uh, brought into the world in this way. I'd, I'd also like to congratulate the, you know, the COSW and the ICSW, really, uh, for taking on this project. I mean, I have known, uh, David Jones has been a sort of a legend in social work really for, um, for I think I might say decades actually. <laughs> so uh, in some ways it's not surprising to me that he should be uh, taking up the mantle of, uh, of, of this, uh, this work in the Commonwealth. And it's a real pleasure for me to, uh, to, to see it continue. Uh, of course, the University of London has a, uh, an international mission uh, and therefore a very appropriate place to be hosting this event, uh, as well as the Institute for Commonwealth uh, uh, Studies, which uh, Philip's been associated with uh, for, some, uh, for some years. Um, you know, we are an international institution. We're not just in the world with 50,000 students in uh, 180 countries, but, you know, we really are of the world. That's where our main educational work takes place. Uh, so it's a unique perspective, I think, to bring to seeing how knowledge and history and experiences are constructed, you know, through different environments, through different cultures and through different histories. Uh, and increasingly, I think we see uh, our role in constructing, you know, educational programs to be born from that uh, international uh, and multidimensional perspective. 
And in, and in that light, really, the Institute for Commonwealth Studies, you know, wishes to really engage with the institutes of the, of the Commonwealth and really uh, find ways to support and, you know, enlighten and build capacity across the across the uh, across the world, working with people uh, such as those uh, who are involved in this uh, in this endeavor. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I will indulge a little bit in saying about social work, maybe from a, a slightly personal perspective, because um, I was drawn to, you know, to social work as a as a young uh, student. There were other things I could have done, although as a as a woman, there weren't many um, social work emerged as something that was uh, offering so many more opportunities than nursing or teaching or some of the other things which seemed more conventional uh, professions for women uh, at the time. And, you know, what drew me to social work then, and I think is still its strength, you know, it offers the opportunity, you know, to, uh, to intervene in the world, not just to commentate on it or to criticize it or to analyze it, but to actually do something about it. And um, although some of those endeavors haven't necessarily always been uh, gone as one might have uh, hoped in a progressive way, they have nevertheless done uh, a lot of uh, important work, uh, certainly in Canada, in, my, in, in the country where I was trained and, and practiced, but I think around the world. And I think it's worth, um, it's worth dwelling on that, you know, not only for the work and the impact social work makes uh, on the families and individuals and communities in which it uh, uh, you know, in, with it, with which it works, and the relationships that it builds within those communities, but also for the people uh, who do social work, and it um, it has been really a place where many women have entered into professional uh, life, drawing on their own personal experience uh, in a way that might not have been so easy to have recognized in some other professions. Um, so a very important opportunity, I think, for, for people of all ages, not just young people, but older, mature uh, people to enter into, uh, into social work, drawing on their uh, experience, bringing in their own perspective their own, from their own communities and families and bringing uh, that rich uh, and sort of uncodified knowledge and experience into the work that needs to be done. And if I just think about you know, social work in my lifetime, um, uh, you know, really, we've seen it move in, in, in the West from being a, a, an activity done largely with church uh, and religious uh, institutions backing it uh, into, and voluntary organizations um, through to becoming, you know, really a, 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 you know, the fifth uh, service, really, social service in, in the welfare state, you know, with CBOM and similar institutions were built around the world at that time. Uh, and, it, and it's become really a, a well a key a key part of the services that people come to rely on in their communities. The uh, and and it's really social work. Although other professions every so often rediscover poverty, you know, social work it doesn't need reminding about it. You know, we this is absolute core business for us. Inequalities, uh, working with uh, people, raising uh, their ambitions, intervening to to expose in the wider community some of the disadvantages and poverty that people uh, experience, uh, even in, 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 in richer communities, but also obviously in developing countries as well. I mean, I think that, you know, as, a, as someone perhaps speaking from the Canadian experience, it, I think I would want to say something about the experience of, uh, of First Nations and Indigenous people in Canada. Um, you know, this has become uh, such an important uh, recognized issue for social work in particular and relatively recently even in my lifetime you know it wasn't when I first started it wasn't such a high profile issue now it's become recognized as well our, the history of, of, of how social work has really had a very big impact on First Nations communities across Canada uh, particularly in child welfare but across the piece um, uh, and and I think I hope now is moved from being part of the problem to looking for ways to be part of the solution. You know, certainly McGill was uh, working uh, in, with First Nations uh, communities. I, you know, I was proud to appoint one of the first uh, uh, Indigenous uh, lecturers to the McGill School of Social Work during my time as director there. And there had been quite a long standing um, project doing work in Nunavik with the Inuit communities actually training uh, largely Inuit women to uh, become uh, the you know, agents in their own communities, recognized as professional social workers, uh, trained by McGill, 
uh, taught in Inuktitut, which was a pretty big challenge, but, you know, people, it was done in a creative way so that people, you know, could be taking charge of their own development and taking charge of working uh, with their own communities and families. And I think that sort of model is increasingly what we see in, in, in international uh, collaborations that you see in social work, as well, as well as collaborations within different communities within countries. So I, you know, as you can see, I think social work is a force for good. It's armed with its code of, uh, of ethics that I know is taken very seriously by those who train social work and those who practice social work. It brings those values with knowledge and skills to, uh, you know, to, to raise issues and advocate for social justice uh, in communities uh, around the world. Inevitably in issues that are so personal, uh, to people's lives and with issues so important uh, to social justice, it has also come into conflict, you know, with different communities. Mm -hmm. And I had to recognize uh, the tensions, uh, uh, the disadvantages that haven't always been recognized, uh, and the power relations and different identities that people bring to something like this. You know, the whole intersectionality perspective uh, has been increasingly important. Um, to helping people understand where people, where different communities, different individuals are coming to the issues of, you know, of, of child welfare or community development or family development. Um, but I, you know, I, I feel social work um, needs to be recognized for the, you know, for the important uh, and noble cause that it is and the skillful uh, and thoughtful approach that it brings to these very big issues uh, in, in communities around the world. I will, I think I'll end with that and just, you know, congratulate the organizers of this event, say it's a, it's a subject very dear to my heart. My PhD was comparative social work, so I think there's lots of scope. I uh, certainly learned a lot in the process, and uh, I know that uh, this, this project of looking at comparative histories of the development of social work, you know, could really bring a great deal of rich knowledge and understanding to, 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 the, uh, to the education and practice of social work. So congratulations, and uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing this event in the next day, and too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wendy, for, for that um, powerful and personal um, uh, support. And I was just reflecting the first time we met, I think, was at the old Commonwealth Institute in Kensington at a, a reception when you were working with uh, Tony Blair's government and then in the Cabinet Office. Um, and uh, we've had contacts um, ever since then. So thank you very much indeed for being with us in person at this, at this hour. Um, it's now my, my honour and privilege to introduce um, Patricia Scotland, who is the uh, sixth um, Secretary General of um, the Commonwealth, um, appointed in 2015, um, the second Secretary General from the Caribbean, the first woman to hold the post, um, the first black woman to be appointed a Queen's Council, um, the youngest ever woman to be made a QC, and uh, she has uh, been in government, um, serving in the Foreign Office and the Home Office and the Lord Chancellor's Department, um, and has been leading the Commonwealth um, since 2015. I've seen the video and I know that uh, Patricia is uh, going to give us some strong endorsements about the crucial role of social work, as Wendy was describing. So. Gemma, let us uh, watch the video welcome from the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. Colleagues, partners and friends from across the Commonwealth, thank you for the opportunity to participate in this fantastic event and to support this brilliant initiative on comparative histories of the development of social work across the Commonwealth. The Commonwealth Organisation of Social Work is as much a part of the fabric of our family of nations as social work is part of the fabric of our societies. We value COSW's commitment to education and training, to providing connections and to enabling progress on critical issues such as the alleviation of poverty. Social work and social workers are of critical importance. Social work speaks to the very heart of Commonwealth values of service, solidarity, and social justice. Social work is about protecting the vulnerable. It's about enabling everyone to unlock their talents and unleash them on the world. It is about being there for people when they most need support. 
And social work across the Commonwealth has a proud history. From the day-to-day -day difference that social workers make to millions of people around the world, to the essential support that social workers provide in emergencies and times of crises. It is important that we have an accurate history of the way social work has developed in the Commonwealth. Too often, we record versions of history that do not fully reflect what actually happened. We must also be open and honest in our reflections with special sensitivity to the strengths in indigenous community practices, linking professional social work with community realities. Not only will this help us understand where we have come from, it will help us to shape where we are going. I welcome the contributions that will be made across this session and the progress it will stimulate in this fantastic pro project. And I wish you well for this webinar and look forward to hearing about the Comparative Histories project as it develops. So thank you so very much for all you're doing. Well, that's a wonderful introduction from the, the Commonwealth Secretary General. Um, it's uh, now my great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, a video welcome and introduction uh, from the Director General of the Commonwealth Foundation, Anne Gallagher. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, as most of you know, Anne is a lawyer, practitioner, teacher, and scholar with a special interest in human rights and the administration of criminal justice. After several years teaching in the law school of the Australian National University and served in the United Nations for 12 years, including a special advisor to the UN Commissioner of Human Rights, Mary Robinson. Um, in 2012, she was appointed uh, Officer of the Order of Australia and named uh, 2012 hero by the US Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton. Let us play the video now. It is with great pleasure that I deliver this short contribution to what I know will be a fascinating event on the past and the future of social work across our Commonwealth. While I'm providing my welcome by way of a pre-record, I do intend to watch at least some of the proceedings in person. This is a subject that is close to my heart and I really don't want to miss the opportunity of learning from you. And I want to begin by affirming the connection between the subject of this conference, your work, your profession, and the mission of the organisation that I lead. The Commonwealth Foundation was created by heads of government to advance the aspirations and needs of the 2.4 billion Commonwealth citizens. It operates within that all important space between government and the people. I can think of few professions more closely aligned with the mission and purpose of the foundation. Social workers are at the forefront of ensuring that citizens' needs are recognised and met. It is social workers who do so much to build that vital link between government and citizens. It is this profession that helps bring to life the conditions of human flourishing that we're all committed to under the Commonwealth Charter, the very highest standards of health, of education, of sanitation and housing. I come to this issue as a human rights lawyer, so I hope you will forgive my immediate focus on the link between social work and human rights. There can be many kinds of lawyers, but it strikes me that all social workers are human rights practitioners. Your profession is the embodiment of what human rights are all about, the dignity and worth of human beings. It's important for us to appreciate that making a link between human rights and social work is not just a rhetorical device. It's much more than that. It is a way of saying that social work means much more than ministering to the needy. That this is a profession which is actively engaged in helping people secure the rights to which they're entitled as human beings under the law. That it is a profession which looks not just at the fallout 
but also at the underlying causes of injustice, inequality and discrimination. As a human rights profession, social work must, by definition, be engaged in the broader and bolder struggle for a world that leaves no one behind. And there is another dimension to a human rights approach, one that is especially important in the context of the Commonwealth. A rights-based approach helps us understand and appreciate what has gone wrong. Like medicine, like psychology and psychiatry, like law for that matter, the history of social work across our Commonwealth is complicated and fractured. There are so many achievements to celebrate, but crimes and injustices have been perpetrated on individuals and communities in the name of social work and by social work professionals. The lens of human rights matters so much because it gives us the clarity we need to openly and honestly excavate and reflect on the past. The program ahead of you and the wider research project that I hope will emanate from it will not shy away from asking tough questions about times when ignorance was too often enshrined in law, when the treatment of Indigenous people and marginalised communities fell well below the standards we should expect. And this should never be solely an academic or intellectual reflection. We look to history to teach us about how to be now, to help us understand how to live and work and flourish into the future. This is a difficult and uncertain time for our world and our Commonwealth. So much of what we believed in and trusted is disappearing. The gap between what people need and what their governments are willing or able to deliver seems to be growing. Today, more than ever, we need to speak up in defence of the marginalised and the powerless. Social workers, the social work profession, is uniquely positioned in this regard. You know what is happening on the ground. You have the authority and the insight to speak out loudly and clearly about what must be done to bring dignity and security to the lives of the ordinary citizens of our countries and our wider Commonwealth. I urge you to use the language of human rights to communicate the story of people's lives and to demand the changes that people are entitled to. Thank you. And I wish you all the best for this important and timely event. Thanks to Anne Gallagher. And we've uh, really um, started off with a, a, a great opening. And for a profession which is 80% women, how significant is it that at this time in the world, all of the leaders of our organisation to have spoken in the welcome are women. And uh, that, as Wendy commented on, is itself a, a significant development and a contribution of social work.